sorry i'm uh, i'm not able to present it in person i had an issue with the visa so couldn't attend but thanks for every, everyone who's joined both uh, in person and virtually first i'll go over the ai profile yeah uh, can you go to the next slide please yeah thank you okay i just cut the live stream Oh, okay. Which so, uh, the previous one. Okay. Hi. Right. Okay. So, traceability and accountability has been at the forefront of a lot of uh, new AI development right now, uh, especially uh, with the rise of the of rise of a lot of the large language models, and uh, AI taking center stage. A uh, uh, lot of these uh, big AI models, including Copilot, uh, uh, the Chat GPT, everything is. Uh, getting sued for uh, a lot of the copyright infringement. Uh, and there seems to be a lot of uh, ethical violations that are coming through. So a lot of it can be attributed to the fact that uh, many of the uh, models that are being made public have uh, the information that is need to assess a lot of these things being private. Can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, yeah. and. Uh, one, uh, a recent article by uh, CISA kind of says that software should be secure by design and artificial intelligence is nothing but software. So there needs to be something like a, a software bill of materials even for the AI software. Because uh, there are two things to note here. May, may, at many a times, AI, so AI models uh, are not standalone by themselves. Uh, in a complex system, AI models form a uh, act as a component in a software, which means that we have to kind of describe the whole software along with being a having the ability to describe the AI properties also, and which is uh, which is what is making even the U.S. military to start thinking thinking about uh, AI bombs. But the problem currently is, in many of the software bill of materials by themselves, they don't have all the capabilities to describe a software that has an AI component or some details of the AI component can not be captured. So we came up with this AI and dataset profile, which I'll uh, explain in a little bit, uh, so that the all the components, the ethical implications, the datasets used, uh, uh, the AI specific details can be described and the compliance issues and the vulnerabilities that are associated with it can be highlighted. Can you go to the next slide, please? So there is another aspect of SPAM which is often overlooked when it comes to AI space is that there are several standards like uh, model cards, uh, not standards, several documentation uh, methods like model cards and, and uh, many other things. However, uh, if we are to do something like identifying vulnerability or ensuring compliance at scale, we need to ensure that things remain machine readable. Only then a lot of this can be done automatically. For instance, the slide that I'm showing you is a study that was done by Stanford, where they took a lot of the uh, public, uh, a lot of the current state-of-the-art uh, uh, large language models, and they assessed for compliance across uh, several aspects, which were highlighted by the EU AI regulation, and they did the study manually by analyzing the model cards of it. However, with uh, with a standard like S SPDX having ability to describe AI profile, uh, AI, we would be able to do a lot of these things automatically. And at least that's eventually the goal that we're trying to tend towards. Uh, and uh, the, the key point that I want to convey here is uh, we need to have a standard that captures all the uh, required data uh, to do such compliance analysis and uh, it be uh, machine readable. Can you please go to the next slide? So, as uh, Rose was describing earlier, a lot of the uh, details have been applied as profiles, and we have two working groups. One is for AI, uh, which actually meets together for AI and uh, dataset. And first, I'll talk about the AI. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? Okay. So just a succinct description of what AI profile is supposed to do. AI profile adds on top of the core software profile. As I was saying earlier, 
AI components at many times uh, lives in uh, lives alongside the software components. So we have this profile that adds on to the uh, core profile. We even borrow some of the elements from the core profile. And uh, the goal of this profile is we will enable traceability and transparency for all the pro all the components of the AI software. And one of the other important things that we have to note, particularly with AI, is that we need to also capture the process that was used to build a lot of these components. So in a final software, an AI model is deployed. So a deployed model has a lot of uh, decisions that were made earlier, say for example, which data set it was used to train on, uh, what are the pre-processing steps that were done, how, how exactly some of the bias uh, was mitigated, some of the noise was addressed. However, when we describe just the software, a lot of these details are uh, missed. So one of the core ideas in this profile is to be able to capture some of these processes too and uh, all the risks and the uncertainty. So uh, in another way, uh, we are trying to introduce elements of uh, uh, not only the components being described in the build of materials, but also the process being captured so that end-to-end -end compliance and any vulnerability that arises from the pipeline itself can be captured and analyzed. Go to the next slide. Next slide, please. And uh, the uh, so both AI and dataset profile, but for this purpose, the AI profile has four key things. Like each pro uh, the AI profile has properties uh, that is specific to itself, which uh, which only uh, which describes just the AI software. And then there are external property restrictions, which are we want to ensure as much reuse as possible from the existing profiles and not really reinvent the wheel. So we have external property restrictions that uh, describes the properties that are borrowed from the other SPDX profiles. And then we have relationships, which are, which connects the two profiles, uh, which connects uh, primarily AI and dataset profile and also AI and licensing profiles. So wherever, wherever there are other profile elements that we want to describe, we use the relationship to describe them. And the other thing uh, that we've been trying, uh, we have also as part of the AI profile is we have both the required and the optional fields. So required fields describe the minimal set of fields that is required to describe the uh, AI component in a uh, SPDX S bomb. And whereas optional fields have add the additional details to the profile. Can you please go to the next slide? And uh, before I go and uh, explain the individual fields of the profile one of the uh, one of the key questions might be why not model cards model cards have been used to describe uh, a lot of the ai models in platforms like hugging face and many other marketplaces but the key idea of not using a model card and one needs to uh, and the fact that one needs to use a s bomb is that model cards have limited scope in the sense that they only describe the ai model and not the surrounding software and at many points in time they oversimplify the software aspect of it and they do not capture the interdependency across many different things. And they don't have particular fields to uh, uh, describe or express security and compliance or versioning. And the the way that they capture environmental impact is through is pretty minimal. And uh, the ethical and social implications, while they have a field to describe intended use and some uh, limitations, they don't necessarily have fields that consider all the different aspects. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So uh, to be more specific, one of the, the, the properties in the AI profile are uh, we, we borrowed the supplied by download location, package version, primary purpose, and release time from the core on the software profile. And then uh, specific to AI profile, we start to come up we ensure that uh, we have uh, we capture energy consumption, the compliance of standards, which standards it complies to, what are the uh, limitations, what what type of model it is. The standard compliance kind of ensures that we comply to as means we capture the standards some things comply to, and the information about training, application, uh, the metrics, the metrics decision threshold go back to the the. The aspect that I was trying to highlight earlier that we not only capture the details uh, of the software component itself, we also try to capture the uh, process that is associated with it. 
and more towards the properties we capture the hyperparameters the metric the decision thresholds that was used on the metric and uh, for the to ensure that we have uh, we comply with uh, acts like eu uh, eu acts and uh, eu ai act and uh, to see uh, other aspects like what are the different bar different um, uh, if the privacy information is captured what uh, what is the criticality level of it we have the fields like safety risk assessment the autonomy type is the model explainable which is one of the which is one key aspect of uh, the eu ai act so these are the fields that we use to describe the ai properties and uh, can you go to the next slide please Here's a worked out example of a famous uh, large language model, uh, LAMA2. Uh, we, like, the problem currently uh, seems to be that many of these, um, for, for, describing an AI, uh, for describing an AI model, we need a lot of these details which are not readily available for uh, many of the existing AI models. But, uh, but as we can see from here, we are able to, succinct, uh, we are able to describe uh, AI model when all the details are available and the details can be reasonably expected to be captured. And the data set that it is trained on is expressed through a relationship to the data set profile and the license can be expressed as a relationship too. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? And uh, I, at this moment, I want to bring our attention to some of the challenges and the next steps that we want to focus on. Uh, one of the key problems right now is we don't have a fully integrated SBOM where AI profile is acting on top of the software profile and a software that describes this whole thing being uh, fully worked out. And that this is something uh, as a community we would uh, uh, like some contributions around. And one of the key problems right now, uh, which is kind of close to the model cuts problem, is we a lot of the fields that we have, since it also captures process, is very textual, and we need better machine-readable representations, and any contributions along the lines would be really welcome. And right now, since the profile is fairly new, we don't have a lot of tooling support that is required for automatic comprehension, automatic analysis, uh, and uh, uh, support from tooling group would be amazing around this. And uh, Right now, we don't have a lot of user feedback for this, and uh, a lot of uh, steps towards uptake would really help. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? OK. That was about the AI profile. I'll describe the data uh, data profile, and then uh, my colleague uh, Gauken would uh, kind of highlight some community examples. And data set profile, uh, much similar to AI profile, is used to describe the data sets, try to highlight the different problems and the challenges that are associated with the data set. And uh, one of the key things that we do here that is not super specific to AI profile is we try to capture the lineage and the provenance uh, associated with the data set. A data set is, uh, a data or data set is comprised of is tip, uh, that is used to train an AI model particularly, is typically comprised of data from multiple different sources. And sometimes these data sets have a long lineage, as in uh, one data set is derived from multiple data sets, which was in turn collected from many different data sources. And it is important to have this whole chain being traced, described, bias in every place being noted, the vulnerabilities in every place being noted. And uh, the, and in addition, these data sets can live without being linked to an AI model also. So we have a separate profile which kind of tries to capture all of this. Can you go to the next slide, please? Similar to, uh, I, I won't go too much into this slide because uh, this is the structure of properties being there which captures the data set specific properties. The, uh, the profiles, uh, the, the uh, fields that are uh, borrowed from the core profile is similar to uh, to the AI profile, and we have a similar structure to remain consistent. Can you go to the next slide, please? And uh, here too, there is an important, uh, there is another documentation standard or uh, a transparent uh, uh, or approach that is data sheets. And uh, the key reason why we don't necessarily use data sheets as be all end all is the data sheets lack detailed metadata, uh, uh, lack detailed metadata being captured. Like they don't capture all the 
uh, lineage, uh, all the sub, uh, data sets that uh, the given data was derived from, they have, uh, like, though they kind of mention the data collection process, they don't necessarily capture the full provenance or full lineage, and they don't have specific, uh, they don't spend any specific attention to the versioning details or the dependencies, and uh, the privacy and security information are not fully and wholly captured. And finally, though they describe about some biases that may exist with the data, they don't have specific fields that explicitly capture all the bias or the noise information. So that is why we actually, for both AI and dataset profiles, what we did was we went through these uh, existing approaches that are being used, like model cards, data sheets, fact sheets. And as a community, we sat through and we went through all the fields to see if they need to be incorporated in the bill of materials. And uh, then after doing all of this, what are the fields that we're missing? Is something that we tried to analyze and include in the data, include in the different profiles. Can you go to the next slide, please? And uh, these are the properties that uh, we ended up with. Uh, so in the left, I show the proper, uh, properties that were borrowed from the other fields, and in the right, as you can see, we have intended use. This, uh, we capture the size of the data set, the noise that is associated with the data set, that or that might be associated with the data set. If, uh, if the data was automatically collected, what are the sensors that are associated with it? And as for the uh, process, we have the data pre-processing uh, steps being collected, the data set collection process being collected. And for uh, privacy, we have uh, we uh, capture if sensitive personal information is used, what is the confidentiality level of the, da of the data set, and uh, what is the anonymization method used. And uh, yeah. Uh, we captured these many different dimensions so that uh, transparency, auditability, and traceability can be ensured. Can you go to the next slide, please? And I also want to, uh, so on the right, it shows a worked out uh, example of the data set. And through the open source project, which is an LFAI project, Open Datology, we have right now captured over uh, 37,000 data sets metadata using the SPDX AI profile. And uh, it can be accessed so that now this these data can be used, or uh, these uh, data profile can be readily used for many different compliance analysis or uh, other uh, to to check other problems associated with it. Now my colleague uh, Gaukan will uh, uh, explain some of the fine. Oh, sorry, I forgot about this slide. Uh, so this uh, the similar pro the similarly the next steps or the challenges that we want to address here is. We, we still don't have a fully integrated SBOM which uh, works out the AI and dataset components. And uh, similar to the AI profile, we have a lot of the fields that are textual right now, and uh, we need to move on from the textual field so that it becomes more machine readable. And we need support from the tooling group to be able to consume these profiles and uh, integrate it as a part of the SBOM, and we require more feedback. And now uh, over to Gaukan. <laughs> 